Today we're talking about lead us not into temptation. Has the devil been trying to tempt you lately? If you say no, uh, you're probably lying. <laughs> he is always trying to tempt. He's trying to get us to fall, folks. That's his duty. That's his job and mission. That's his mission in life. That's his mission statement. Is he wants to get us tripped up and fall. Because he knows that's the best way to hurt God. He knows. We were made in his image. We were made to be in his family. And he knows that when he can destroy us, that it actually can hurt him. And I just want to ask the question anybody who has kids, you know what I'm talking about. You, if somebody came in here and was wanting to kill us and you said, hey, shoot me instead, not my kid, right? You would rather harm be done to you than your kid. And the devil is the same way. He knows that if he hurts his, God's kids, that it hurts God more than if the devil could hurt God somehow. So yes, indirectly, the devil knows how to hurt God by hurting us, by leading us into temptation, by getting us to fall by getting us to play with the thing that is going to hurt us. That's sin. And it has many different forms. And He wants to get us tripped up in anything that will get us. Right? right. If you don't have a problem with cocaine, He's not probably going to bring that to you. But if you have a problem with gossip, He's going to give you all you can handle. Yeah. Right? If you got a problem with cussing, he's going to give you every opportunity to do it. If you got a problem with lying, he's going to give you all the options. Take your pick. But it's up to you. It's up to you if you're going to accept it or resist it. It's up to you. You don't have to do, you don't have to buy into what he's selling. You slam the door on that sleazy car salesman. Alright? He's trying to peddle you some sin and you say, no nah, sir, I don't want none of it. You don't even have to engage. You don't even have to talk with Him. You shoot the Scripture back at Him like Jesus did. Amen? Amen. But that's something the devil doesn't ever stop doing. It doesn't ever seem to end the temptation. It's everywhere. It's in every shape and every form. And sometimes, to be honest... It's hard. It's hard to live in this world when everywhere you look, there's temptation in all its forms. If you have a struggle with lust, whew, I feel sorry for you because it's everywhere. The temptation. Women's dress is getting worse and worse. Men too. We ain't helping the women out any. Sometimes when I drive down the freeway, i got to look, avert my eyes from some of the uh, billboards that are out there, some of the commercials that are out there. And I'm constantly having to put my blinders up. Men, I want to encourage you, put your blinders up. Amen. Just because it walks in front of you, you don't have to look. Amen? Amen. Women? <laughs> women too. Just because he walks in front of you with no t-shirt on, you ain't got to look. All right? Don't buy into what the devil's selling. Amen. And if you got a problem with that, then that is a that is a struggle, okay? And you may be like, I'm past that point in my life. I don't even think about it. And that, good. But guess what? He ain't done with you. He's got other temptations coming your way. There's a lot of them. And there's things that we don't even think about. There's things that we don't even think is, is a sin, but it is. We gotta ask God to help us. See, Jesus was tempted in all parts. Everything that is available to be tempted with, the devil hit him. But guess what? Jesus was perfect. He overcame and he passed every test. But guess what? He imputed that righteousness to you so that you could do the same thing. You don't have to sin. That's the beauty of having Jesus come to live inside of you. The Holy Spirit to come and live inside of you. God the Father to come and live inside of you. That's the beauty, is that you don't have to sin. Yeah. Yes, we still will. Because none of us are perfect. Yeah, we're going to make mistakes. But they can be 
fewer and far in between. Amen? Amen. You might go two or three days before you slip up. You might go four days. You might go five. We can stretch it to a week. Who knows? But try. The beauty of it is that you have that ability to overcome. Because He has called you and has made you to be more than an overcomer in Christ Jesus. More than an overcomer. That means you don't have to do it. You're not a slave to it anymore. The devil at one point had us all bound and slaved, uh, uh, as a slave to sin. Chains on you from everyone you can think of. But as soon as Jesus came in, He broke every chain. Amen. But the devil's constantly trying to convince you you're still, you're still slave to it. You're still chained up to that thing. But you're not. You have been set free. So be free. But not free to sin. Amen? Amen. Amen. He was perfect. He help, he's going to help us to be perfect. We're not going to achieve it yet. When we die, we'll be there. But nevertheless, that's still the goal. That's still the goal. We still struggle, don't we? Have you been struggling lately? Have you been seeing the temptations coming your way? I pray right now that God will lead you not into temptation, as the message suggests. Let's go ahead and get into our scripture. Luke 22, 31 and 32. And the Lord Jesus said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Amen. Amen. We learn a lot from this statement. First, the devil has to ask for permission to attack us. He has to ask. And he is doing so to sift us like wheat as well. He wants to separate the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. Who's really going to stick with God when the hard times come? When that uh, wheat press comes rolling over you to crack you and break you? Are you really going to stand the test of time? Are you really going to be proved to be a wheat? Or are you going to be a chaff? Because that press will, will tell the truth. How you react to the problems and the pains of this world is the test of your character. Will you withhold your integrity in those times of weakness? Will you withstand the temptation? Or will you fall to it every time? Man, I'm going to tell you, it's easy to serve the Lord when everything's going your way. It's easy to sing hallelujah and praise songs when everything's going your way. But when the hard times come, is the praise coming even louder? There's going to be the test, folks. And it will come sooner than later. Maybe you're in it right now. Keep the praise going forth. And I trust the blessing will come. But the devil's going to keep trying to sift you as we. Now, this is a process... Uh, the process of separating uh, the sifting, so to speak, from the chaff and the true wheat. Chaff is basically this hard casing that isn't edible. Nobody wants it. You don't want to eat it. And in reference, a hard head. You would be a, a hard head if you're in this reference as, a, as part of the chaff that isn't living for God, who isn't truly serving God. It's easy to say that you're a Christian, right? It's easy to say it. I can put on a costume. I can put on a Superman costume all day. Uh, you see a lot of kids, especially this time of year, putting on costumes. You might see a Superman walk by or Spider-Man or, or all the superheroes, but that doesn't make them a superhero, does it? You might say you're a Christian all day long. You might even go to a church. might even have a cross on. might even have a Christian t-shirt on. You might know how to say all the phrases, the catchphrases. You might even know a scripture or two. You might say, Hallelujah, or brother, I'll pray for you. But what does your life really look like? Are you living for the Lord? Are you being obedient to His commands? Or are you falling into temptation every time it's presented to you? The proof is in the pudding, folks. How are you really living? And you know that's the thing. None of us really know. We all might talk a good game when we're amongst each other on Sunday 
mornings, right, or uh, Wednesday evenings. We might talk a good game in front of other people, but when you go home, how are you really living? Because yeah. only you and God know. Amen. And God knows. God knows. And that should scare some of you. If you're, willy, if you're living willy-nilly <laughs> and living sin, living in sin, that should scare you. But for a good reason. Let the fear of God come, come forth and you have a respect for Him, a true respect and acknowledgement that He sees what I'm doing, so I better be on my best behavior. Amen. At all times, 24-7. I'm not playing the game. I'm not playing the part. I'm not putting on the Christian costume. But I am one. Amen. I am this. I live this. This is me. I'm not fake. This is all of me. You may not like me, but this is me. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to be me. Because my true identity is in Him. Anything else is the fake. Don't be fake. Be real in Him. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. Man, I feel like He's with me. Another good thing that came from this Scripture is Jesus said, I have prayed for you. Guess what? We got Jesus praying for us too. He lives to intercede on our behalf, continually praying for us, as well as standing as our eternal high priest forever. Constantly praying for you. Anybody need prayers today? Amen. Jesus got you covered. He's got you covered. Also, we see that He tells Peter to strengthen his brethren. After you've been strengthened, now strengthen somebody else. Now that you've overcome temptation, help somebody else too. too. Amen? Amen? That's what we're here for. To be in this together. To help one another. I don't know about you, but sometimes it's tough to get out of the pit. Uh, we were recently at my wife's grandma's house and She's recently deceased, not long ago, and they had to drain her pool because they're putting in a new pool lining. Well, it was crazy to see that pool empty because, man, it looks really deep. And there's a big incline. Big incline. And my son, he's like, can I get down in there? I was like, James, I don't know if you can, if you can get in there. We might have to do like a train of people, you know, where you, you, everybody's holding on a hand and now we get you out like that. But I was thinking as I'm thinking about it, sometimes we need help out of a pit. Sometimes we need some other hands coming in to help pull us out because we can't get out of it on our own because we're too, we've fallen in. We're in the pit. And it's a steep incline, folks. Sometimes it's hard to get out of that pit once you're in it. And we need some other hands to be reaching down to help us, right? Amen. Call upon your brethren. That's what we're here for. If you feel like you're stuck in a hole right now, if you feel like, man, I, I just don't feel like I can get out of this by myself, cry out to somebody else and say, brother, I need some help. Don't have too much pride to ask for help. Sometimes that's what the devil works on, your pride. Well, I can get out of this myself. It might take me a little longer, but I can do it myself. I don't want to burden somebody else with my problems. <coughs> do you ever feel that way? Folks, God tells us, to care about each other's burdens. Yeah, of course, we're going to cast them to Him too. He says, cast your burdens on me, but He also tells us to care about each other's burdens. Sometimes we need help. Don't let your pride stop you from getting help. Do you like helping people? Well, maybe somebody else likes helping too, but if you don't ever ask for it, how are they going to help you? You're robbing them of the blessing they're supposed to get from helping you. And by you trying to struggle and get out of it yourself, you're hindering God's work in you longer than it should. Because guess what? If somebody comes along and you slap that hand away, God was like, man, I'm sending you some help. Get out of the pit now. You don't have to stay in there two years. Get out of the pit now. If you got a hand coming your way, accept it. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Strengthen somebody else whenever you have been strengthened. Here's some more on, on the devil's attack. We already know that he went and attacked Job. I feel like I keep bringing up Job a lot lately. Job 1, 6-12 Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came.